high students. So yesterday you had your uh, CBAC AIBMT paper. Now, uh, now it is called NEET Phase One. But all those who filled their forms for AIBMT, all those who registered for AIBMT, this is it for you guys. All those who did not register for AI, AIBMT, you still have NEET Phase Two in July. Now let's just analyze the paper. Just uh, a preliminary observation tells us that this is. This was sort of an average paper, more on the tougher side if we consider uh, you know, physics and chemistry. Uh, let me just take a few numbers. For physics, uh, I, would, I would consider about 18 questions as easy, 23 questions as average, and only 4 questions as difficult. However, uh, I went through the analysis of uh, you know, various other people and there is a, a difference of, of opinion between average and, and difficult. And the difference is, uh, there were a few questions which were directly uh, based on formula, but they were slightly you know, complicated, so they might be considered as both tough or average, depending on what your opinion is. Uh, now, when it comes to 11th and 12th, in the case of physics, it was, it was very uh, surprising actually, because most of the questions in physics were uh, from, I mean, equal number of questions in physics were from 11th as well as 12th, right? Let's take a few questions over here. Now, there is, uh, I have with me code Y, of um, AIPMT and in that question number 107, uh, it's a very easy question, right? So that basically tells us the level of easy questions that we have. In column A, you're given the magnification values and in column 2, you just have to identify what kind of mirror or, or what kind of an image it is, right? So uh, the options are also given to us, we, we only have to choose the right answer and going through just A and B options actually gives you the right answer. So A is a negative magnification, A and B both are negative. One is more than one and the other is less than one. So you can easily find out as, as since both of these are negative, it has to be a concave mirror. And in one case, it has to be a, a real image and in the other case, virtual image. Right? Uh, there, are, there are more questions as well. Let's see. Uh, I am going to take one more question, 117, which I consider to be slightly tough. Now, the question was actually directly from a concept. In this case, you are given two liquids of uh, you know, differing densities and there was a cylinder with a third um, I mean density and you had to figure out the density of that cylinder. Now, uh, the only concept that we had to utilize in this was that buoyant force is equal to uh, the amount of the weight of liquid displaced. So that is what we had to equate, the amount of liquid displaced, the, the amount of liquid displaced in the first layer and the second layer. So overall, it, after that, it was just you know mathematical. However, just to analyze this part, I just think it would be slightly difficult for most of the students to visualize the whole image. On the other hand, there was just one more complicated question. I think 119. A car is negotiating a curved uh, road of radius r, and uh, the road is banked at an angle of theta. So coefficient of friction is given, and you have to find out the, uh, the safe velocity. Now, this is a kind of derivation which is directly given in the NCRD, where you have to find out the maximum velocity for the banking of the road, or you have to find out the angle for the, ma the maximum velocity. So that is what this question was directly based on. But seeing the options with so many uh, you know, symbols and stuff, one could uh, you know, argue that this was slightly you know, tougher, or you know, in other words, more. So overall, uh, uh, overall, I would say physics was on the tougher side. So, if you have solved, let's say, more than uh, you know, 10 to 15 questions, you're good with physics. So, mm -hmm. out of um, you know, 45 questions, if you have more than 15, that's very good. Moving on to chemistry, on the other hand, chemistry was actually particularly easy. That's what I would say. I mean, moderate but slightly on the easier side. That is because if we go through the tally of chemistry, we have 15 easy questions and 20 moderate questions, right? Uh, there are 10 questions which can be considered as tough, also in the moderate questions and easy questions. Uh, most of the questions were directly fact based, as in you either knew the answer or did not know the answer. And they were directly from the NCRT. We'll take a few examples. Uh, I have one more data. In chemistry, one of the surprising facts was that, um, yeah, only 17 questions were from class 11th. About 28 questions were from class 12th. And these 28 questions, or these 45 questions were all equally distributed among physical, inorganic and organic. But the surprising fact was just that the weightage of class 11th was very low in chemistry. Right? Uh, now let's see, let's take just a few questions in chemistry as well. In chemistry, let me take the last question of this set. Uh, so, question number 179, the, the question was, uh, you're given data related to Mg2+, and Ca2+. And you were asked which of the statements were false. Uh, 
Now, any bio student would basically be able to, to solve this question very easily and it's a directly fact-based question and you have so many questions which are directly based on this. There are questions based on uh, spontaneity of reaction, spontaneity of um, absorptions and so many different things. Uh, on basicity as well, there was a there was one question on basicity of um, of amines. Uh, in that case, it was again directly fact, I mean fact based that uh, the lone pair are involved in resonance and hence uh, aromatic amines are you know less basic. Uh, there was one more question about shifts base in which uh, an aldehyde reacts with uh, a primary amine and what is the product. Now that question could be considered as tricky, but it can be easily done through elimination. We know that it is not going to produce any acid or any alcohol or any, any other thing and by elimination the only option left was shift space. So you know that was the right answer. Uh, there was one more question, which of the following has the longest CO bond length? Now the bond length of uh, CO itself is given to us but that's a slightly useless information. Over here the, the concept simply was that uh, the overall charge, when the, the overall charge of the complex is negative, the complex ent entity is negative. In that case, uh, the CO bond length increases, right? So that was uh, the point. And going through the options, you can easily see that, see that option number four is the right answer. So yes, some of the questions could be considered as slightly complicated only because they required a little more in-depth preparation. But however, most of the questions were very direct. I'm, go I'm going to take one more question: Which of the following biphenyls are optically active? Now, in that case, if you were to analyze all the biphenyls on the basis of number of chiral carbons and you know symmetry and everything, it would be very difficult because most of them are symmetric. There is a there is one of them which is actually on, on first glance is, is not symmetric, but that is not the right answer. The right answer is option number three, which looks symmetric. However, the only point that you had to consider was due to ortho effect, there will be a change in it, the structure of, of these biphenyls, and hence it will not be symmetric, and hence it will be optically active. So these were uh, some uh, you know, in-depth in information which were uh, important, but otherwise the paper was slightly on the easier side as compared to physics. So overall, if you score more than uh, 460, 465, I would say you're um, on the safer side because last year the cutoff was somewhere around 453 and this paper could be considered as slightly more complicated than last year's paper. We'll be back with the, the analysis of bio very soon. Until then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.